Hi, everyone. You're listening to Unlocking Greatness podcast with Zunja Glass, and feel free to call me Z. I want to talk today about encouraging yourself. So I think I'm going to call this podcast Be Encouraged. Uh, I have a question. It's a rhetorical question because, of course, you can't respond back, but you can respond in the comment section. When was the last time you encouraged yourself? When was the last time that you actually took a moment to just sit and reflect and say to yourself, you know what? You're doing good. You're doing good. When was the last time you've done that and meant it? And the reason I'm asking this is because um, I thought about that myself. When I was asking God, what should I talk about today? I felt in my heart, gosh, uh, Z, when was the last time you've been able to tell yourself that you're doing good? You know, are, are you, you, you guys aware that There are so many people that can't walk a single day in our shoes. And there are some people that can't walk a season in our shoes uh, because we've been fighting battles and, 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 and been through things for so long. I think sometimes it just becomes a natural thing for us, right? Where we're naturally putting out fires every day. And we think we're not doing good because we haven't arrived or because, you know, I don't know. I, I've noticed that, you know, my audience is a lot like me. So that's why I love reading your comments whenever I have time because I'm like, oh, my goodness, we're so much alike. But for the most part, I can tell that the majority of the people that listen to this podcast, you guys are go-getters. Um, and, and you guys have tremendously big hearts, which is what I love about you all. So we're always trying to take care of other people, make sure everyone else is, you know, taken care of and um, but we also are always aspiring to be something or become something or to do something or to finish something or to grow something. That's just naturally who we are. I'd say my rough estimate is at least 90 something percentage of the people in, uh, that listen to this podcast. And I thought if you guys are like me to that degree, I'm willing to bet that there's many of you that probably feel what I feel, which is it's very, very difficult for me to sit, think about all of the obstacles I've overcome. Think about where I'm at now. And almost like pat myself on the back a little bit and just say, you're doing good. Now, I can give the glory and praise to God. That part's kind of easy, right? And there's a difference to me. I can easily give the glory and praise to God because I do that every day. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, God. Thank you for all you've done. You protected me. You blah, 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 blah. That's the easy part. But it is so hard for me to be encouraged by encouraging myself and just saying, I I'm just, I I'm proud of who you are, who you're becoming, and you're doing good. You're doing good. So this podcast is really just to encourage you. I know, I know, because I read the comments, we, we're not quite where we want to be right now. I already know that. And I already know that, you know, that we're always striving to kind of get someplace and there's things we have to do. And I also know that there are many of you, I would think about half, if I had to guess, who feel that sense of guilt because you've not started up, you know, practically anything in, in terms of what you feel God has told you to do. Or maybe you're still trying to figure out what he wants you to do. I get that. I get that. But I'm talking life in general. I'm just talking in general. This, this isn't necessarily about something tangible, but just in general. When was the last time you just said to yourself, my goodness, with everything that I've been through and with what God has helped me to accomplish and, 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 and all the trials um, and things that I've endured, God, I'm doing good. I know I still need to work on myself and I need to take better care of myself. I need to exercise. I need to eat a little bit better. I need to be in my Bible more. I need to do this more. I need to blah, 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 but I'm doing good. That's what I want to get in your spirit today. Be encouraged. 
So many of you are such phenomenal people. I've read quite a bit of your comments and seen how hard you're fighting to honor God in your life, how, how hard you're fighting to get to even know God. Because what's, what's interesting about uh, all of the subscribers on, on this podcast is I'd say about half of the people, oh my goodness, know, the, know their Bible way more than I do. I mean, can run circles around me, in fact, because there's ministers and all kinds of people in this podcast. And then the other half are beginners, people that, you know, don't know uh, the books of the Bible and know very, very, very little, and they're learning as they go along. So I'm kind of speaking to everybody in general, which is uh, we all, doesn't matter what level we're at, have to be okay with taking a moment to just breathe in and out and encourage ourselves and say that we're doing good. You know, there's a passage in the Bible. I've been soaking a lot in Ecclesiastes, as you guys already know, right? There's a passage in here. Now, some of you may not like this passage, but I don't know. I guess you just have to deal with that. But the reason why this passage stands out to me so much is because I thought, gosh, what is it that, what is it that gives that sense of failure or that sense of urgency, um, that sense of, um, feeling like, man, I'm still not where I need to be, or I just haven't done enough, or, you know, when am I ever going to get it? When am I ever going to get to this point? Man, when is this ever going to be right? When is it going to be? Where did where does that come from? And I read a passage in Ecclesiastes. Uh, it's in chapter four. And again, you may not like it, but I'm going to read it. And it's in Ecclesiastes chapter four, and it's in verse four. And King Solomon said this, and I saw that all labor and all achievement spring from man's envy of his neighbor. That's pretty deep. I'm going to read it again. He said, and I saw that all labor and all achievement spring from man's envy of his neighbor. I don't think that that needs much clarification. Uh, because when I read that, uh, it, it, to me, it's pretty clear that we're always looking at what someone else has, what someone else is doing, what someone else is accomplishing. So I was thinking through um, just myself again. You guys know I have my moments, but uh, every blue moon, you know, I'll go through my moment of, oh, my goodness, you know, I'm, uh, it, it, it's just so hard for me to encourage myself at times. Uh, but I was thinking through, I've had a few people in my life that says to me, they said, Z, my goodness, with, with everything that you've accomplished and done uh, and achieved in life, how could you ever really struggle, you know, in that area in terms of feeling like, uh, I don't know, a failure or, or I don't really want to use the word failure, but I guess, you know, there's been times in my life where I've definitely felt that or feel like you're behind schedule or feel like you've not accomplished this or feel like, man, why do I keep messing this up and why isn't this quite where it needs to be? I was thinking through that uh, today, and I thought, where does that come from? What, 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 what spirit is bringing that to me? And I thought through, man, if I lived in the middle of nowhere, and I had no influence from anyone in my life, how radically different would my thought process be uh, in terms of... Um, uh, how I view and, and what I feel about myself and my accomplishments. Does that make sense? I'm just being kind of vulnerable with you guys. Uh, I kind of agree with Solomon in this when he says that, and I saw that all labor and all achievements spring from man's envy of his neighbor. Now you may be thinking, well, Z, I don't feel like I'm envious of people. That's fine. If the shoe don't fit, don't wear it. You know, I'm not trying to throw out judgment on anyone. But I think that there's some validity to this because in essence, what he's saying, at least this is the way that I interpret it, and you can please feel free to comment in my section on it, is who says that we're not doing good? Who, who, who says that we're not right on schedule? Who says that we haven't accomplished enough, you know, or, 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 or that, you know, this isn't where it needs to be? Well, where does it need to be? What am I basing that on? You get my point? Like, where are we getting these scales from when we're assessing uh, what we've accomplished or, or where we're at in life? And again, this isn't about 
don't base this around money. Don't don't put this around, oh, she's talking about money or having more or growing a business. It's not even in that umbrella. I'm just talking just life in general, you know? Sometimes it's just hard in general for us to just say, God, I'm doing good. With everything that I've been through, I remember at one point when I said, I think I talked about this a long time ago, when I was in probably one of the darkest stages of my life many years ago. And I said, I'm doing good just to not be in jail right now. And I meant that with every fiber in my body, with the things that I was dealing with and some things I wanted to do. I'll just leave it at that. But I was going through a really, really, really bad stage in life. Um, And uh, I was hurt beyond repair. At least that's what I was feeling at that time, especially some things I felt some people were doing to me. And anyway, without going into all of that, the point that I'm getting at is that uh, we have all been through so much and at times are going through so many, so many hard uh, seasons in life that I think the little kiss that God gives us, my sister taught me that a long time ago. She said, sometimes he, God gives you, I think she used the word pretty. Sometimes he gives you a pretty, or I think she may have said, uh, and I took it as sometimes he gives you a kiss. So anyway, the little kiss, I think sometimes that God gives us that we don't always feel It's just that hug of encouragement that, my daughter, you're doing good. Or my son, you're doing good. With all the things that's on your plate, now I'm looking at you, whoever you are, but with all the things that are on your plate and you still are getting up each day, trying your best to give God the praise with all the mess you're dealing with, You still are trying to provide and help others. In many cases, people that don't give back to you. You still are trying to show love to people. You still are pushing past day after day, trying to turn that dream into a reality when you've seen so many setbacks and experienced so many. And I know many of you have because I've read your comments. And you still are going to get up again the next day and try again. You've been through so many health issues. You've experienced deaths. As you all know, I've recently lost uh, my son. And you still have the audacity to try to love God and give and serve and go to work and take care of your family and do this and do that. You're doing good. We're doing good. We are doing good. And sometimes I believe we have to be encouraged to hear that. That's what I love about David. Remember we talked about David that was in 1 Samuel or 2 Samuel? Um, Where are my Bible scholars at? Because you guys know. Um, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 30. Remember when David and his crew came back from destroying, um, I don't know, was he Am- Amicalites or whoever, but they came back from some battle that they'd won. Remember when David came back in 1 Samuel chapter 30? Remember what happened? Some of you guys know. Remember, uh, basically, his, his, I hate to call it a village or a city, but it had been attacked. And they had ran off uh, with all of their women, their children, uh, you so when, so imagine coming back from war. David has all his soldiers with him, and let me just read it because I'm I'm paraphrasing. I should just read it. So First Samuel chapter thirty verse one. It says David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raised the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and buried it, and had taken captive the women and all who were in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but they carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men came to Ziklag, Ziklag, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. My God. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured and then he gives their names. 
I, I can't pronounce it, An, 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 Anarom of, of uh, Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Wait a minute, I'm the leader. You're going to stone me, but okay. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. And check out this next verse. But David found strength in the Lord, his God. And some versions of the Bible says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. And then David basically just went on to say, hey, you know, Lord, what shall I do? And, you know, and, and, and the Lord gave him a plan and the plan ended up working out. They ended up basically getting it all back. But what I love about that is that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He found strength in the Lord. That's what's so amazing about that to me. I just want to leave you with be encouraged in the Lord. We are doing good. We have been overcomers. I know we're tired. I know. I've even told God the other night, I says, God, I'm just so tired. Forgive me for being tired. And I know that's an odd prayer, but that's just how I talk to him. So I know we're tired. I know we're still serving. I know we're still giving. I know we're still working through the pain, working through the hurt, trying to keep our eyes to the sky and, 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 and wait in expectation for God to answer certain prayers. I know. I get it. Just take a moment to encourage yourself in the Lord. And so I hope that you're encouraged by this short podcast. I pray that whoever you are and wherever you are, whatever your situation is, because I feel the pain when I look into the camera lens, because as I look into the lens or speak into the microphone, for those who are not watching the video and who are only listening, I literally feel the pain and the distress and the hurt uh, uh, that many of you all have communicated to me via email or, 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 or I don't know how you said that, uh, DM direct messaging me or, um, putting comments in the section. I feel it. Be encouraged. You are doing good. I know it doesn't feel like it. I know, but listen to my words. You are doing good. We are are doing good. So continue on and don't give up. Okay. I love you all. This is Z with Unlocking Greatness podcast. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening. This is Z with Unlocking Greatness podcast. Please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the notification button. Love you all. Bye-bye.